In my hand, I have the M2 iPad Pro and the M4 iPad Pro. Which one of these two devices is gonna be for you? Let's talk about it. Now, both of these devices are absolutely incredible. You cannot go wrong with one of the modern iPads. Now, I wanna make this very clear. Whatever iPad you are looking at is going to be a great device, whether it's from all the way down to the mini, which I still absolutely love, and I really wish Apple would have upgraded up to like the 13 inch Air, up to the new M2 Pro or M4 Pro. Um, all of these devices are going to be fantastic. You see on any of these iPads, the chip is not being saturated. And so whatever workflow you have, whatever you're doing, you are going to be fine. But if you're trying to decide mostly for budget and kind of what you want long-term future-proofing, let's talk about the M2 iPad Pro and the M4 iPad Pro. The first thing we need to talk about is the physical design. Now, when you're looking at these two iPads, this is one big difference. When I first picked up this one right here, which is the new M4 iPad Pro, uh, man, it felt very thin and very light. Now, the other one, if you don't have something to compare it to, you probably don't notice it. The other one, however, is just thicker. But I think that's something to point out. When you're getting these devices, if you don't have them sitting side by side, it's not gonna be that big of a difference. And so this old M2 iPad Pro that I have, you know, I've had this in my backpack for Ever. and it just it never feels like I have anything in my backpack now yes this new iPad Pro it is going to be lighter it's I mean it's gonna be lighter because it's that much thinner it's a really beautiful amazing device um, however if I don't have these two things holding in my hand it's just not that big of a difference now I will say that I love the new space black color uh, in all of Apple product lineup, I have loved the space black the most. That's why I've got over over here, I've got my laptop. I have that in space black. Um, but this old space gray color, the gray color of the old iPad, it's still a really good looking iPad, but it's just hard to beat <laughs> the space gray. It really is beautiful. Now looking at the size difference, these are both the exact same size iPad. They're both um, awesome. They do have the connector on the back so you can connect them to the keyboard. But there is one major difference that you're going to see in these two. When you're looking at the old iPad Pro, you see multiple uh, cameras right here and then a LiDAR sensor. One is a regular camera. One is a widescreen camera. I'm trying to get it in the light. But when you pick up the old iPad, they have gotten rid of that widescreen camera. And this right here is just the LiDAR sensor. So you only have the one camera, which to me is totally fine because if you're using this iPad and you're taking pictures, you're out in like a graduation or something like that, you look really funny with an iPad. Don't do that. Uh, use your phone. Your phone's, uh, the camera on is just really, really good. So do that or get a actual camera. Now you will see on these iPads, they have speaker grills up top, speaker grills up on the bottom, and it's got the USB-C port. That's for the old one. The new one, or I'm sorry, that's for the new one. Uh, the old one is the exact same. Let's see if we can get it. Yep, two speaker grill. It's got the USB-C down there. So that, in that regard, they're the exact same. One place that they are very different is gonna be in the camera. As you can see on the old iPad Pro, it has the camera up here when it was in uh, portrait mode. Whereas the new one doesn't have that. You see that? If I put my fingers down here, it doesn't have it. It is actually now up at the top of the screen up here, which is really helpful because when you're doing FaceTime calls, no longer are you having to kind of hold the iPad in a funny position. You can use it, especially if you have the new keyboard. So while you're doing your Zoom calls or FaceTiming any of that stuff, the camera is front and center. The next thing we need to talk about is the screens on these display. On the M2 iPad Pro, you have the XDR display, which is like a liquid retina XDR. Really what it is, is it is a mini LED display, which has beautiful colors, beautiful blacks. Um, however, it is not as nice compared to the new tandem OLED screen. What they did is they took two different layers of OLED and they put them on top of each other so that they could get the nits of brightness as high as possible. It has a thousand nits sustained brightness on the new iPads. That is absolutely crazy. It also has a peak brightness of 1600 nits, which is just very bright. Now, I don't use my iPad outside all the time, which is why the nits of brightness is not really that important to me. But what you do need to know is these two displays are extremely nice. But if you want to talk about which one is going to be better, yes, the new tandem OLED is going to be better. However, the mini LED of the M2 Pro is not a bad screen at all. In fact, you getting this, if you're holding this in your hand and you don't have it to compare right next to each other, you're not going to notice a difference because you can't compare them. So like, don't make this decision. Yes, I mean, if you're like, screens is everything to you, you can buy the brand new one. But if it's not, and you just kind of want a good solid screen, the M2 iPad Pro is going to be such a great price and it still looks amazing. Next, let's talk about the biggest limitation for both of these devices. Now, yes, this new iPad Pro has the M4 chip and that is an awesome chip. It can do absolutely anything you want, no matter what you were looking to do. However, the biggest thing and the biggest problem with the whole iPad lineup is nobody can saturate 
the chip. If you're using an M1 or an M2 iPad, it feels just as fast as an M4 iPad. So whether you're doing video editing or photo editing or you're writing, like any of these things is gonna feel just as fast on the M4 iPad as it is on the M2 iPad. So really, Apple just needs to get ahead of the game. Now they are never, ever, ever going to put Mac OS on an iPad or make a, an iPad a full computer. That's gonna just completely destroy their margins. They would not cannibalize a whole section of their company. But I do think Apple can do some really great things to get this iPad iPad up to where it needs to be. Probably the main one they need to do is just fix the file system because like the files app on these things, it's terrible, it's clunky, it doesn't work really well. If they got a good file system and file organizer or file management system, it would be so much better. Now, yes, it is incredible that you can now do SSDs with your iPads and so you don't have to get the one or two terabyte iPad Pro in order to really utilize this. You can actually get a SSD and kind of connect it to the back of your iPad and that's a great way to have a lot of files on you at all times and have a lot of different photos and all that. And so like that's an awesome thing, but still there's just so much about iPad OS that is just lacking. Now one really cool thing about the M4 iPad Pro is you get to use the new Apple Pencil. What I love about this Apple Pencil is it has pressure sensitivity in the actual pencil with the haptic engine. So when you squeeze it, watch the screen, you squeeze it and this little thing pops up that helps you pick the different tools that you want. And so you can draw on it, right? That's really awesome. You can say subscribe to all the people out there watching this video who haven't subscribed yet. But it's just really nice to be able to hit that little pressure sensitive thing, have all your tools come up. That way you can do it really fast. I know a lot of people, they like to take notes on their iPad. And if that's you, this new Apple Pencil Pro, it's really awesome. However, with the old M2 iPad, you can use the regular Apple Pencil. And if you're just taking notes, you're not necessarily an artist, that's still a really great way to go. Like you could save so much money by going with the old M2 iPad Pro. Next, let's talk about the price of these iPads. They are wildly expensive. This is my daughter, Ellie. We've talked about this before, but the new iPads are $1,000 or $1,300. That's really expensive. Let's look at the M2. As you can see right here on Amazon, you can get the M2 iPad Pro for $749. That is a fantastic price especially compared to the 1000 or 1300 of the M4 iPad Pro. So I definitely recommend most people, if you're budget conscious, go for the M2. And I think that's where I wanna land the plane on this whole thing. The good news is whichever iPad you buy, it's going to be a great experience. Now, I would say we're in an awesome opportunity for you to save money. You do not need the newest brand new Apple product. You can go with something like the old iPad, the M2 Pro and have a great experience. In fact, they took all of this technology and just put it into the new iPad Air. The only difference there is that doesn't have the 120 hertz display. So it's really great. We're living in a time where these iPads will last you five, six, seven, eight years if you take care of your devices because the hardware is way ahead of the software. And so let me know in the comments below, are you going to try to save some money and go with an older iPad or are you gonna go with a brand new iPad and try to get a few more years out of it? Let me know. Guys, like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel. I've been doing a lot of iPad content, but I will be doing other MacBook and iPhone content pretty soon. And if you like this video, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right up here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.